Say that. Use it. Give the other guy no chance. Lock him out of the fight. But inside, he would be pretty good. You give the guy a chance. Why give him a chance if you don't have to? So basically, Nelson is good on the inside, but he's great on the outside. He's not great yet because he's not consistent enough for the to those, they're not all sunshine and rainbow. Some of the fights I gotta watch, yo. But we're gonna talk about Austin Trout. He's back on ESPN Friday Night Fights. His last fight was against Daniel Dawson on ESPN. And then remember the two fights before that was his clear-cut decision loss to um, Iris Landy Lar. And before that, his somewhat close loss to um, to uh, Saul Canelo Alvarez. Saul Canelo Alvarez went on to face Floyd Money Mayweather in one of the most lucrative fights in history due to inflation. <laughs> I'm saying this, I'm T-Street Controversy, this is T-Street Controversy Live, and I'm a boxing reporter for Real Combat Media, and I cover every single major fight live. Austin Drought, 27-2 and two with 14 KOs. The question I got on my Facebook today is, is Austin Trout underrated or overrated? Well, if you look at the two defeats, and then you look at his last fight against the Aussie, um, the Aussie um, Daniel Dawson, where he was down multiple times, I'm thinking to myself, okay, that's three straight fights where he's went down. And I'm an Austin Trout fan, and it's easy to like him because he's a cool dude. He's just a cool dude, but when you look at him inside the ring, yes, he has the activity to maybe defeat a lot of the top-name fighters. But the punching power to keep off a pressure fighter or the punching power to, to deter someone from consistently coming at him is not there. Now... We've also seen that he can be hit and he can go down hard. He always gets back up. But when Austin Trout goes down, like when he went down against Canelo, you know, the legs gave out. Then when he went down against Laura, he was like doing the guitar. You know, then when he went down against uh, Daniel Dawson, he definitely flew out the ring. You know, so you think, okay, all these guys, well, well, Canelo and Daniel Dawson are considered big punches. To whereas in Laura, if he hits you clean, you're going down. So you have to think, okay, well, the defense of Austin Trout. And that's once again why you have to say, okay, maybe that's why he's back on ESPN. You know, maybe this fight against um Lu uh, Luis Grada, 17-3, with uh with uh 17-3-2, with um 13 KOs, maybe the reason why he's taking on this guy. And let's talk about his Gradaha guy. He and I'm probably messing his name up, I know. He looks fat. Now, of course, he's a 154 pound fighter, but when I say fat, I'm not okay, okay, not fat. He's soft. He's soft. Also, he doesn't throw a lot of punches. Now, he's got those 13 KOs, but those 13 KOs are really a who? And, and I'm saying that, meaning like, okay, well, he got 13 KOs and he's got 17 wins, but he really, he knock out nobody that you know. Or he, or he knocked out people, you know, in some barnyard somewhere. Like, seriously. So if you look at his most notable fights, the most the great Willie Nelson, and no, not that dude, the other Willie Nelson, the boxer that's like 6'4", who was, I was actually watching right now on ESPN. That was his last fight back in August, me and um, Willie Nelson and um, Grady Hop. Let, wait, let's let's listen to a little bit. Look here, we talk about the fight plan, about Grahada. He has that when he gets inside, he drops his left hand, and then he pushes up against the opponent. Look, drops his left hand, see it? It's low, and then he's going to push up against Nelson. Nelson should have taken a step back there and let the right hand go. If he did... I don't know how to describe this guy, but Austin Trout should win over activity, and Austin Trout shouldn't get put down, and he shouldn't get cracked. Now, if he gets put down against a guy like this, I'm going to be like, okay, Austin Trout, you are officially overrated. Now... As far as uh, going back to who this guy's fought, he's fought Willie Nelson and he's fought Jamel Charlo of the Brothers Charlo. Jamel Charlo is the one that, that that's the um, that's the boxer, 24-0 with uh, 11 KOs. To whereas in, yeah, 24-0 with 11 KOs. To whereas in, um, what was it, 24-0 with 14 KOs. 24, I believe it's 11. But what I'm trying to say is that uh, Jamel is the one that's going to be taking on, or supposed to be taking on Demetrius Andre, just to put him into perspective. So... What could be next for Austin Trout? I guess right now he's trying to get back on the networks or, or he is an Al Heyman fighter. So maybe he's going to, um, how can I put it, um, maybe move over to, to, to NBC or whatever, how they're going to do that. Now, Austin Trout is an exciting fighter. Don't get it twisted. But I'm trying to figure out when it comes to a championship, who can he be? Now, maybe a canine. Maybe a K9 Cornelius Bundry. 
maybe a Demetrius Andre. Don't see it. Um, a Carlos Molina. He could probably beat Carlos Molina, even though Carlos Molina is not a champion anymore. I'm trying to match him up in good fights because, depending on how he looks against in this fight. He's going to take a step back up now because they don't want to keep him on ESPN or on that level too long. You know, you want to start mixing him up. But like I said, he's got a lot of work to do. Um, I'm T-Street Controversies. It's T-Street Controversy Live. The fight's going to be happening on ESPN, Friday Night Fights. Uh, November, is it November 11th or November? Yeah, November 11th, 2014. And I'm going to be covering that fight live. T-Street Controversy, T-Street Controversy Live.